with China conducting more military exercises near Taiwan, including the recent sending of nearly 150 aircraft entering their air defense identification zone, the news was full of talk of the possibility of war. While tensions are higher than normal, the possibility of mainland China invading Taiwan to reunify the two has existed for over 70 years now. So why haven't they done it by now? Will they do it soon? And if they do, does Taiwan stand any chance of stopping them? But before that, our sponsor, Skillshare. Odds are you've probably heard of Skillshare before. They're an online learning community that has thousands of classes for creative or people who are just simply curious. And regardless of whether you're just interested, a hobbyist, or even a pro, they have classes for every skill level to help you learn. For example, I've been using After Effects for more than 10 years now, yet still learning new things. So, I started watching After Effects classes, like this one, so I can brush up on my animation skills, which is something that you might have noticed aren't the greatest in my videos. But hopefully I'll change that. They also have live classes, you can interact directly with the teachers and ask questions, and even connect with fellow creatives in the community. It really is incredible, and I found it incredibly useful. It's curated specifically for learning, no ads, and they're always adding new classes, including premium classes. So go, check it out. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare, so that way you can start exploring your creativity today. Again, that's Skillshare. If you are a country, and you're worried about being invaded, and you want to build up a defense to stop it, first thing you need to know is what you're up against. You need to know how they'd invade, when they might do it, and with what weapons. To conquer Taiwan, China needs to get a massive number of troops, tanks, armored fighting vehicles, and all the supplies they need to operate onto the island. And this has to be delivered by sea. And this means an amphibious assault to establish a beachhead for supplies on ships to arrive. And as you probably know, amphibious warfare is one of the most difficult and complex operations to carry out successfully. These ships would be under attack by aircraft and shore-based anti-shipping missiles long before they could ever reach the island. And even if they did make it, they'd still be under constant attack from the air while attempting to unload. So China would have to do a few things first. 1. Eliminate Taiwan's Air Force Also important to eliminate early on would be Taiwan's early warning radars and long-range air defenses like Patriot, Skybo, etc. So that China's Air Force can conduct operations over the island with impunity. And third would be to attempt to destroy Taiwan's command and control centers, communications, etc. to disrupt their ability to coordinate a defense. Going after these three things early on is common in modern warfare, and it's exactly what the US did in Libya in 2011 and Iraq in 2003. I already made a similar video in the past which focused more on how China might invade Taiwan, so I won't get into too much detail on specific weapons each one has. If you're interested, I've linked that video here in the top right. The way China would do this would first be with cyber operations to disrupt, jam, and even conduct psychological warfare by putting out conflicting information and possibly even false orders to defenses, leaving them disorganized and disoriented. And at the same time, conduct large-scale ballistic missile strikes on things like air bases in an attempt to ground their air force, air defense sites, and Taiwan's government and military command and control. How the rest of the war plays out would greatly vary on how effective this initial strike is. Because of this, Taiwan has attempted to harden these important sites. For example, there's a massive underground bunker that runs from the Grand Hotel Taipei to the Ministry of National Defense Headquarters, and likely beyond, which is known as the Henshan Military Command Center, and it's built specifically to withstand ballistic missile attacks. Roughly two-thirds of Taiwan consists of rugged mountains, and over the past 70 plus years of the threat of a Chinese invasion, they have built up many underground command centers, bunkers, etc. Xishan Air Base, for example, has numerous underground facilities, believed to be able to house over 200 aircraft, jet fuel for them, weapons, and even a hospital. But aircraft still need a runway to take off from, and you can't have an underground runway. China could, and they probably would, attempt to hit the runways and the ramps leading to them out of the mountain and be able to effectively shut down the base that way. Being able to have your leaders, generals, and your forces survive that initial strike is key. It's also key that they can stay in contact with their forces to be able to mount any sort of counterattack. Interestingly, Taiwan operates long-range land attack cruise missiles like the HF-2 and 2E. The HF-2E has a reported range of 800 kilometers, giving it the ability to strike targets deep into China, from Hong Kong to Shanghai. Taiwan, however, has a defense budget roughly 20 times smaller than that of China, 
and a lot of that goes into defensive weapons, so they cannot afford to operate these offensive cruise missiles in large numbers, which means their impact on the overall war would be minimal. They could use them in an attempt to target China's own command and control, at least those that are within range, and they could perhaps use them to target shipping ports that China might use to ferry weapons and supplies to Taiwan, or do some damage to airbases. However, China has several dozen airbases within 800 kilometers of Taiwan, and the sheer scale of China's military in general makes a few non-nuclear cruise missiles nearly insignificant. The US launched over 800 Tomahawk cruise missiles against Iraq alone in 2003, and that was against a country that had already had most of its defenses highly degraded after the Gulf War in the 90s, and continued strikes over the next decade in Operation Northern and Southern Watch. Against a country like China, you could easily use 10,000 Tomahawks and it would still not be enough. But the biggest and best defense Taiwan can have is an asymmetrical one. There's simply no way Taiwan can ever match China tank for tank, aircraft for aircraft, and man for man. So they need an alternative. Something that is small, easy to conceal, and difficult to counter. Yet something that can be built in massive numbers that can complicate China's plans. Having a small number of the large, highly capable weapons, like the latest F-16Vs they are buying, or those Skybow 2 and 3s is great, but again they cannot match China one for one, so losing one becomes much more costly for them. Instead, they can have a large number of small asymmetrical weapons, like swarms of inexpensive drones that could cause major disruption to China's attempt to gain a foothold and setting up a staging point for future operations or large numbers of man pads that will make life incredibly difficult for those low-flying Chinese aircraft and helicopters conducting operations over Taiwan. Things like man pads and drones are extremely difficult to counter as they are small and highly mobile, making them difficult to detect, and they can be spread out and operating in large numbers for a relatively low price. Basically anything that can operate without a strict top-down command and control network, which as I mentioned earlier could be taken out at the start of the conflict. Communication lines might be down, so they'll need to be able to continue on and carry out their objectives as independently as possible, and find other methods of relaying information and coordinating attacks. Here is where Taiwan's geography does give them an advantage. The hills and mountains surrounding Taipei would make great staging points for asymmetrical operations. They can emerge, strike, and quickly retreat back into the hills. Other options might include things like operating large numbers of small attack boats and possibly even commandeering fishing boats. These could be loaded with short-range rockets and missiles to attack an invading amphibious force. However, the efficacy of this could be problematic, as it puts civilian vessels at risk of attack by China who might not know which one is military and which isn't. Another is having a large number of spread out anti-ship missiles along the coastal areas to fight off Chinese ships. You might notice a lot of this sounds familiar to strategies and tactics of countries like Iran, who basically faces a similar challenge. That is, having to have to face down a large, powerful naval force with only a tiny fraction of the budget itself. However, in such a scenario, Taiwan would likely fail to stop them in the end. China has been carefully studying every aspect of an invasion of Taiwan for 70 years now. They would not attempt any attack unless they were 1000% sure they would succeed. And apparently China is not at that point yet where they could be confident of success. One of the biggest complications for China is the possibility of the US and other allies coming to the defense of Taiwan. So until they can somehow negate that risk, or be confident that they can still win even a wider conflict against them as well, they will not be gambling with the possibility of losing such a war.